What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Today we're taking a look at another highlight compilation of some of the coolest and especially the craziest abilities that never actually released into League of Legends. And we've got a group of a bunch of cool new interesting abilities for you guys. And of course for each one we're going to showcase the concept, the design, maybe do a little animation for you and talk about why it didn't work out and maybe explore what the character would have been like if they had released with that original ability in mind. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button or let us know in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. So first up, we're taking a look at some abilities that didn't make it onto everyone's favorite or perhaps least favorite samurai, Yasuo. So about a year before Yasuo actually entered his development phase, game designer Joe, also known as Riot Ziegler, worked on a completely different kit for a samurai-based character at the time. The original samurai concept revolved around a marking mechanic where his auto attacks would apply a mark onto the opponent. These marks would be used in combination with his different abilities to create extra effects, one of them most notably being a bleed effect. The concept ultimate for this kit was also very different. The ultimate would have you dash in a straight line, and then everyone hit in that dash would be stunned. As the samurai sheathed his sword, all the damage would then come through to the stunned opponents. The idea was to have this nimble swordsman who sheathed and unsheathed his blade consistently, kind of like, you know, samurais do in anime, I guess. This core design did end up inspiring Yasuo's design, but other than that, everything was dropped for two main reasons. Firstly, the main goal for Yasuo's design was to create a melee carry who felt very skillful and intense to play. Riot wanted you to feel like you were a talented samurai as you played the champion and strike down your opponents. However, they found that having this ultimate with a ton of crowd control and a pretty big radius ended up with just everyone building him as a bruiser and playing him like an off tank. The thing is, although the ability sounds really cool thematically, the relationship between wind and Samurai really needed to shine for the overall gameplay theme to work, meaning that they needed to keep a good amount of open design space to make everything feel and play fluidly, and it just didn't really work out for Yasuo's theme. As kind of an added little bonus for fun, Yasuo's name was also changed to be something different during development. The name Yasuo was popular in Japan about 50 years ago or so, apparently, and this made people feel that the name wasn't very epic, and he deserved a name more fit for his Master Samurai theme. Joe said himself that one of the reasons they went with Yasuo as the name was because he was given his name at sword school in hopes of claiming his wild spirit. According to Riot Ziegler or Joe, the name roughly translates to Peaceful One in Japanese. Other names that they considered included Pora, Sho, Tachizake, Hayate, Fujin, Ken, Doc, Fen, and Seb. Personally, I like his name, but Tachizake definitely sounds pretty awesome. I gotta give some props up to that one. And apologies for my pronunciation here. Anyways, love or hate him, Yasuo ended up a well-developed character with a really cool kit and pretty cohesive gameplay, so I gotta say Riot probably accomplished their goal on that end. Next up, we've got some abilities that never actually released for Gnar. We'll be looking at a few abilities that were on his kit around mid-development before they were changed. Originally, Mega Gnar's W was both a stun as well as an auto attack that had a chaining effect. Now, it's safe to say that crowd control grouped with damage on a basic ability, as well as an effect that would have chained into multiple things, seems like quite a lot for a character such as Gnar. Riot seemed to agree, saying that they felt that his kit was just a bit overloaded, you know, just a bit, and then they decided to simplify the W to clarify the consistent use cases that the ability had. His E was also much more powerful at the time. It would have Nard leap into the air and then knock up enemies that he hit when landing back onto the ground. It apparently felt really great to use and really fun to play with and actually really followed his theme well as it kind of created this crazy shockwave effect. At this point though, Nard's crowd control was definitely getting out of hand and he just had way too much, so they decided that they unfortunately had to cut out the knockup effect altogether. Most interestingly enough though was the original design for Nard's ultimate, and it was a skill that ended up being implemented on Tom Kench, and it was actually his Devour. And the version on Nar was actually very similar to the design on Tom Kench. Riot liked the ability a lot, but they felt that it belonged to be a part of the core of a champion's design rather than as a secondary feature as kind of an add-on. You know, Nar's entire concept is built upon the idea of a champion that transforms back and forth between being this nimble and mobile character into this crazy massive tank, and they ended up deciding that Devour could be saved for a better purpose, and they instead replaced it with an ability that they felt made a lot more sense and especially was just a lot more fun to play with in terms of the transformation pattern of this champion. 
Next up on our list, we have a design for Zaya's original Ultimate. One of the rioters who worked on the design for Zaya and Rakan commented on a Reddit post talking about one of the original designs for her Ultimate. And this one's actually really crazy to explain, so I'm just gonna read exactly what he wrote. And he said, you and Rakan could turn a 2v5 into a 5v5 if your team was not around. Now this is a really insane concept, and the way I kind of imagine it is like if you summoned a Mordekaiser ghost for every single ally on your team or something like that. It's honestly really crazy to think about it, and they probably knew that because they definitely followed up by saying that it was just way too overpowered. It's probably a good thing that this design was left out because it definitely sounds really crazy. A little fun as well, but insane nonetheless. Next up, we have an alternate design for Galio's E ability, which is Justice Punch. Originally, it actually had a very long charge up period before the dash effect, something that you could kind of compare to Vi's Q, for example. It, however, felt really clunky and kind of just bad altogether, and this is what gave the rider the idea for a jump and wind up movement, which is what we have today, essentially. Although there is still a delay, it generally feels a lot better because there's still kind of movement where you dash back and then dash forwards. Responsiveness is definitely one of the most important things for making a League of Legends character feel and play well. And it's great that Riot have always been kind of thinking about this quality when developing new abilities for champions. And for our next set of abilities, we've got some stuff that was actually canceled from the brand rework that happened during the Mage class update way back. Now, this information was taken from a Rioters stream where they did a Q&A and talked about some abilities here and there and designs for the reworks. Now, unfortunately, I can't show that exact Q&A to you guys because the Twitch VODs were long since deleted for them, but I at least was taking some notes at the time of watching it live and have them saved. Anyway, some key notes here and there were that they wanted to try to make Brand a little bit more unique, but his kit overall didn't entirely have any holes in it. So they ended up just keeping it as it is, but one of the designs that they had in mind was like an apocalypse mode brand, where they would just kind of have him go almost super saiyan exactly. He was even described to be able to smash everything and just go absolutely crazy. And they also tried an ability that would actually light the in-game terrain on fire. You know, he would put a circle on the ground, and as long as brand stood within the circle, it would give him a buff and deal damage to enemies. Now a crazy apocalyptic brand sounds pretty awesome. It definitely would have been cool to know what some of his abilities or design directions could have been. They also tried an ultimate on him that had infinite bounces, but I gotta say that one definitely didn't work out that well. And heading all the way back to Yasuo briefly again, he also had a bunch of different Q variations in his design. The design was always to essentially charge up alongside a casted ability, but some of which were originally made with very different intentions. So the first circle of his Q had Yasuo strike forward in a really thin line, followed by a cone and then like a 360 AoE circle slash. It honestly sounds kind of like a combo straight out of Mortal Kombat. It would have been pretty interesting to see how it could have been implemented and animated into League of Legends. Another iteration had Yasuo strike from side to side consistently with each cast. The base premise for Yasuo was to have a stacking mechanic, which was important as they wanted to create clear windows of opportunity for the player. Within these moments, Yasuo players would learn to either play aggressively or force themselves to take a step back, depending on their situation. That design is most likely what inspired his dash ability as they wanted to allow him to slide back and forth as well as stack with each one performed. Overall, Riot wanted you to feel like a samurai master, and I mean, the design of Yasuo turned out pretty well, at least for the overall theme of what they were intending. And next up, we're taking a look at some abilities that didn't make it onto Jinx. So we did take an in-depth look at Jinx as well as Yasuo and many other champions in our What Could Have Been series on this champion, but we've got a couple new abilities with Jinx that I didn't really talk about in previous videos. And of course, if you've watched those videos, you would know that Jinx was originally intended to essentially be like a ranged Udyr, where every single button or ability on her would equip just a different weapon and she would essentially just have four different weapons. And each ability would modify her basic attacks very significantly, very similar to the way that Udyr did. Now it turns out that ranged Udyr is actually like one of the most broken designs ever because well, it's ranged, right? So of course that design didn't work out and many things were changed later on. But at the time, her ultimate would actually adapt to the weapon that you chose and would actually change based upon the equipped weapon, essentially creating a design where you would have three ultimates within your gameplay kit. You know, it's kind of comparable to maybe Karma's Mantra ultimate, but in a way that's like a lot more offensive. And apparently the only true concept for the design that made it into her current kit from that design of ranged Udyr was the minigun. 
Even then, however, was actually really difficult at the start. Originally, the minigun wouldn't change forms and would essentially just act as an actual minigun, meaning that it would actually just consistently keep shooting non-stop, but that quickly became an issue with last hitting and clearing minions. While Jinx's design today isn't the perfect minigun example, it definitely fits the context of League of Legends, and I gotta say, it still feels like a minigun, and at the end of the day, that's kind of what's important. Although I definitely like the idea of a champion with multiple weapons as a base concept for their overall design. It could definitely add a lot of variety and playstyles into one kit, and hey, maybe Riot will revisit such an idea in the future. Either way, that's just about going to wrap up our list for today's video. Are there any abilities that we talked about today that maybe you wish actually made it into the game? Definitely let us know in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this one, hit the notification bell, press all the buttons, you know what to do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.